to Cooking Caribbean, the show that gives you a taste of the islands. Today we journey to the beautiful island of Trinidad, known for its carnival, vibrant culture, friendly people and lush tropical rainforests. Trinidad lies at the furthermost point of the Caribbean. It's approximately 11 miles off the coast of Venezuela. It's a very cosmopolitan island due to its colorful past. Aside from its native Amerindian background, it has been influenced by the French, Spanish, Portuguese, British, African and Asian cultures. This fantastic fusion of cultures is not only evident in its population, but crosses over into the everyday cuisine of the island. Blanchichaise is a French word meaning washerwoman. This name was given to the village because of the many washerwomen that lined the riverbanks to do their daily washing. population of about 3,000, many of whom are fishermen and the remainders being farmers and homemakers, there's never a short supply of some hearty countryside cuisine. popular dish and many of the inland farmers are quite skilled in the preparation of this meal. On their way to the garden with smoked herring in hand, the farmers gather fresh seasonings such as thyme and cilantro. Green bananas are cut from their trees and brown provisions such as cassava, yam and dasheen are dug up. These are root vegetables and digging them up takes a little time. At the garden site, more fresh herbs such as thyme and pimento peppers would also be picked, along with other necessary ingredients for making this delightful meal. A fire is started and a pot with some water is put on for boiling the ground provisions. Yeah. 
Afterwards, water is collected from the nearby stream. The vegetables are cleaned and cut into sizable pieces. Fire is then extended to accommodate a smaller pot. It is in this pot that the various fresh seasonings and tomatoes are added. After it has fried a bit, the smoke tearing is introduced and with a quick stirring motion, everything is mixed and a strong spicy aroma fills the air. After 15 minutes or so, the small tearing is ready. The ground provisions, because of their dense nature, take a bit longer. And the cooking time is generally about 30 to 40 minutes. Crows were brought to the New World during the slave trade. The warm tropical climate was ideal for the cultivation of such a plant. With very little effort, the okra trees grew unrestrained and proved its versatility in various dishes and in teas. The seeds were grounded and used as a substitute for coffee and the leaves for brewing tea. Okra pods are finger-like and slightly curved in shape. 
Its green and sometimes reddish skin can be either ribbed or smooth. Opus are highly nutritious. It also has a tremendous potassium content of 257 milligrams. Okra and rice is a dish that was introduced to the island by the West African slaves. In contrast to the availability of okras, there was a scarcity of meats, and since slaves were not afforded such luxuries, pickled pig tails became the only meat ingredient. This traditional recipe continues to be prepared in very much the same way as it was many centuries ago. Okras are harvested frequently throughout the year in Trinidad. Their trees grow to six feet, sometimes more, and blossoms are delicate yellow flowers. Once the okros are about three to four inches in length, they are picked and sold in the various markets. A fine selection of okros is purchased at a nearby marketplace. The main ingredients that will be used in the preparation of this meal are rice, fresh seasoning, pumpkin, okros, and pig's tail. Steve is prepared first. It is normally sliced into thick pieces and placed in a bowl of water. A fresh lemon is squeezed into the water. The pig's tail is mixed with its lemon juice and left to soak. A piece of pumpkin is then peeled and sliced. Before the okros can be cooked, their caps must be cut off as well as their ends. The okros are thinly sliced. Pimento peppers are cut into thin strips. Scythe is diced. Freshly picked thyme leaves are cleaned and added to the combination of seedlings. The pig's tail is removed from the lemon juice. It is placed together with the sliced pumpkins and okras, and they are marinated with the freshly cut seasonings. Some oil is poured into the pot and left to get hot. Once the oil is ready, the marinated ingredients are added and stir fried.
their lots to cook in their juices. After a few minutes, rice is added. It is mixed in with the okra and pig's tail. A hot green pepper is added. Water is poured in for boiling the rice. Once again, the okra and rice are stirred around. This prevents them from sticking. Some cooking margarine is also added. Further mixing takes place to ensure that there's an even spread of flavor. Salt is the final ingredient to be added. The pot is then covered and left to cook for 20 minutes. This meal is best enjoyed when served hot. In this segment of our show, we visit the southwestern part of the island. La Brea is a Spanish word pronounced La Brea, which means pitch or tar. And this is what immediately comes to mind when one thinks of La Brea. This small town is home to the world's largest pitch lake. Its circular shape spans an area of over 100 acres and has a depth of 250 feet. According to legend, the Kaima Indians, an indigenous Amerindian tribe that once lived here, indiscriminately killed a number of beautiful hummingbirds. These birds were considered sacred, as it was believed that their ancestors lived through them. Because of this sacrilegious act, their gods punished them by allowing the earth to open and swallow the entire village, leaving in its place this huge black pool of tar. Pieces of broken Amerindian pottery have been found in the lake, as well as the remains of prehistoric animals. The scientific explanation for the existence of the lake is that a fault line in the sandstone at the bottom of the lake allows the seepage of crude oil or bitumen, which constantly builds and replenishes the lake. Many tourists and locals alike visit the pitch lake, but the lake is not the only attraction for them. The hot and spicy sauces that can be purchased not very far from the site are also appealing. Roadside vendors here offer a wide variety of hot sauces. Regardless of the type of hot sauce being made, whether it is pimento pepper sauce, series hot sauce, or spicy mango sauce, the common underlying ingredient is always hot peppers. 
A number of hot, fragrant peppers, both red and green, are used. They are washed before being cut. Care is taken not to bruise them during this process. Other ingredients to be prepared are karaili and morai. Karaili is the local name given to balsam pear or bitter melon. This vegetable is extremely acrid and is used to balance the taste of the peppers. The ends of this vegetable are cut off. It is cut in half and its fire red seeds are removed. It is further cut into thin slices. More rice. A local name for a type of turnip is also prepared. This root vegetable is peeled. It is cut into thinly sliced lengths. Hard peppers are also cut up using a knife and fork. This prevents the capsaicin noise in its juices from burning one's hands. It is set aside for later use. Green, unpeeled mangoes are finely grated. Grated garlic is added to the mango. Salt is added. Grounded masala is added. Crushed ripened peppers are added. Mustard oil is poured in. Everything is now thoroughly mixed together to ensure an even distribution of flavor. It is then bottled. This is called mango kuchala. Even though it may not look like a typical hot sauce, it certainly carries the flavor. Sectioned hot peppers are placed in a bottle. The sliced karali or balsam pear is also added. Lime sauce with pieces of limes are added in between layers of hot peppers, karaili and morai. This process is repeated until the bottle is filled. Finally, vinegar is poured in as a preservative. This is a very strong combination hot sauce, not recommended for the faint of heart. <laughs>